Have you ever had trouble evicting a tenant? How long did it take for you to get them out? Here's a story about a tenant in Long Island, New York, who has been dodging being evicted from a property for over 20 years. Way back in 1998, a man named Gromert Hanspell purchased a three-bed, two-and-a-half bath home in Long Island for $290,000. His mortgage on the home was $232,000 with a 7.375% interest rate. Since he took out his mortgage from Washington Mutual over 23 years ago, he has made one initial mortgage payment of $1,602.37 and has likely saved himself an upward total of $440,000 by not paying his bills. As unlikely and uncommon as this is, how has Gromit managed to dodge all evictions thrown at him these past two decades? To start off, Gromit did not pay his mortgage for a full year following his first payment. At this point, his bank started the process of foreclosing on the home. By May of the year 2000, Washington Mutual successfully foreclosed on the home and Hansfell was forbeared from any claim to the property. But Hansfell never left. By January of 2001, he filed his first bankruptcy claim record show. He then went on to file another bankruptcy claim in November of 2001, two in 2002, and one in 2003. If bankruptcy filings didn't work, Hanspell simply went to the state court seeking relief, sometimes acting as his own attorney. Hanspell then went on leveraging the U.S. Bank Code's automatic stay rule, which gives debtors a temporary reprieve from all collection efforts, harassment, and foreclosures. Meanwhile, in 2004, Hanspell transferred the deed of the home to a friend, Rajinder Pal, even though he had no legal right to do so. His friend Pal, then using the Keenmore Street address, filed for bankruptcy in 2005, staving off eviction yet again. Mr. Hanspell and Mr. Pal used the court system and the bankruptcy proceeding as a sword to get out of lawful debt rather than a shield was most disconcerting to the court. By 2008, Washington Mutual had gone under, making one of the largest bank collapses in American history, with its assets eventually being taken over by J.P. Morgan Chase. The new bank was also unable to boot Hanspell, and it has been locked in litigation with him for years. In May of 2018, Chase unloaded the property to Diamond Ridge, which offered Hanspell $20,000 to leave. He did not take the deal and instead, again, filed for bankruptcy in 2019 and 2020. In addition to this, another occupant of the house, Boss Chala, filed for bankruptcy four times in 2019, as did another resident, allegedly named John Smith, who filed once. According to Diamond Ridge Partners attorney Jordan Katz, there always seems to be a new occupant who pops up at the last moment. They never show up in court. Since purchasing the home, Diamond Ridge has spent approximately $150,000 on legal fees and paid $50,000 in property taxes. In addition to this, he said the pandemic has given Hanspell yet another reprieve because the COVID-19 backlog in New York's housing courts has kept them from pursuing their eviction efforts. Court records show at least three other people listed in this home as their address have also filed for bankruptcy in Bookrun Federal Court. These individuals won the automatic stay only to have the claims eventually dismissed. When asked further about these people, Jordan Cates states, it's a real group of people that are more than willing to use the courts and abuse the courts to whatever extent they need to extend their illegal occupancy. As of May of 2021, Hanspell and all the other occupants still remain in the home. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.